We're here at a local restaurant, and these girls here are obviously playing air hockey, one of my favorite sports as a youth. And one of the interesting things about air hockey is that the table has little holes drilled in it, and air is blowing up. Now the purpose of this is to reduce friction so that the puck stays the same speed or can be accelerated quite easily or decelerated quite easily. The thing that I like about air hockey tables is that they <laughs> scored on herself. <laughs> anyway, the thing I like about air hockey tables um, is the fact that they illustrate a type of collision that we don't see every day. Most of the collisions we see in, a, in our natural world are kind of messy. They have deformation. They have uh, things sticking together and things blasting apart and flying apart. Here we have the handles. We have the puck. They stay rigid, rather firm, and they don't deform. So we have collisions uh, of this type, which are referred to uh, as nearly elastic. And, uh, what I'd like to do is let's go back to my classroom and talk more about this type of collision and kind of the opposite, an inelastic collision. Nice shot. So there's two basic forms of collision. Remember, they're much more complicated than this. But there's two basic forms of collision that I can illustrate with these two spheres that I have here. Now, these two spheres are made out of rubber. They, uh, they both appear to look identical. Um, they have the same weight. They can, they're both squishy, I can squish them. But if you, if you observe carefully, I'm gonna drop them on this piece of white paper, and you're gonna see that they behave differently upon impact with the paper. Can you see that the sphere on your right fell down and pretty much stopped and stuck to the paper? Whereas this, this ball is hitting the paper and bouncing up. All right, so this very clearly illustrates the two types of collisions. The first type, where the object is actually stuck or attached to the object at the point of collision. This is what we call an inelastic collision. And I like to tell my kids to think of this as a sticky collision. The objects collide and stick together. Now remember, in real life, rarely do objects collide and stick together perfectly. So again, this is a simplification. In this instance, the, the, the ball is hitting the paper and bouncing up, that more closely resembles the type of collisions we saw at the restaurant and, and on the air hockey table, and that represents what we call an elastic collision. And I like to tell my kids that that's what I refer to as a bouncy collision. So we have sticky, we have bouncy, all right? Now let me illustrate the bouncy. Now I have here a air track and basically this device operates exactly the same way as the air hockey table. There are little holes drilled into the device and it has an air source and so air is used again to reduce friction to allow these gliders to slide more readily. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to place one glider here at rest. I'm going to take this other glider and I'm going to exert a force on it and have it propelled down here at some velocity. Now, because there's very low friction, that velocity will stay fairly constant. This glider will then hit this glider. Now, at that point, momentum will be transferred in, within this system. So what I want you to do is I want you to pay careful attention to the speed of this cart afterwards to compare it with the velocity of this cart before it hit. All right, so watch carefully. I think we all saw that the velocity of this glider and this glider were about the same. Did you notice that this glider stopped? Now what's happening here is a complete transfer of momentum of this cart to this cart. Velocity was conserved. And of course, you know the equation for kinetic energy. Kinetic energy equals one half mv squared. So the kinetic energy is proportional to the velocity squared. So if velocity is conserved and the mass of the two gliders doesn't change, the kinetic energy stayed constant 
for this type of collision. Now remember in nature, that doesn't really happen. We always lose energy in a collision. However, we're simplifying this for the purposes of making it easier for you to analyze at this level. Now, the other thing we should notice is that this will still obey the law of conservation of momentum. And that is the momentum before the collision and the momentum after the collision are conserved as well. So in an elastic collision, we have three types of conservation. Conservation of speed, conservation of kinetic energy, conservation of momentum. Now that's an elastic collision. Now I want to show you one more thing. For this two glider system, we could rewrite this equation as the mass of the first cart times the velocity of the first cart plus the mass of the second cart times the velocity of the second cart. And so we have two terms. We have this term and we have this term. We have two separate objects. It's different when we go to the next type of collision, which is inelastic. Now, for this collision, I'm going to do the similar experiment. I'm going to have this cart at rest. I'm going to move this cart down with some velocity. And instead of bouncing, I've put Velcro on these ends, on these bumpers. They will stick together. So in essence, what happens with this type of a collision, if they stick together, remember we call that inelastic. So they'll stick together and essentially become one object. Right? So you have to treat it a little differently. Now, let's see what happens. Pay attention to the velocity after the collision. Could you see that the velocity of the combined mass afterwards was less than the original velocity of the system that was in this red cart. That's important understanding. So now, velocity for the entire system became less after the collision. So velocity in an inelastic or a sticky collision is not conserved. And if velocity is not conserved, guess what is true about kinetic energy? It's not conserved either. So in elastic, we had those two quantities conserved. In inelastic, they're not conserved. However, both momentum before and after for both equations, for both situations, is the same. That's conserved. All right, so momentum is conserved only for both of these types of collisions. Now, since the cart is one mass now, when you write the equation for after, the equation before will be exactly the same as in elastic collisions. But now that the carts are stuck together, you have to be very careful. And this is asked very, very commonly on the Regents exam. What happens, the momentum after will now be a combined mass. And since they're one mass, they can only have one velocity. So you would go m1 plus m2, quantity of times some new velocity, and I'll call that V prime. You can call it whatever you like. But basically now we have an expression for the conservation of momentum of an inelastic collision. It's very critical that you know the difference between an elastic and an inelastic collision and be able to write equations for systems for each.